First and foremost, with the patient who may have a neck or femur fracture, the most important thing to check is uh, their pulses, their distal pulses, so the dorsalis pedis and the posterior tibial artery pulse, because you want to make sure that they are neurovascularly intact. So checking for pulses and checking the sensation is very important to see whether there has been some major compromise of the blood supply uh, down towards the extremities. Once a neck of femur fracture has been imaged and you can classify it based on the location of the fracture and the garden classification, you can then start thinking about what type of management the patient is likely to need. So before I mentioned that the capsule is an important landmark because if uh, there's a fracture within the joint capsule that suggests that the blood supply is compromised, whereas a fracture outside the capsule is likely to mean that the blood supply is still intact. So on that basis, if you have an extra capsular fracture, the blood supply is likely to be relatively maintained, so it is just a matter of trying to align those two fracture components such that the fracture can heal. So this usually involves inserting something called a dynamic hip screw. With intracapsular fractures, it depends on the degree of displacement. So remember that garden one and two fractures are either incomplete fractures or complete fractures with no displacement, whereas garden three and four are, are considerably more displaced. So if it's garden one or two, it is a complete fracture. It's within the capsule, so there is a risk that the blood supply may be compromised. However, given that the fracture isn't actually particularly displaced, it's more likely that the blood supply is still intact and that the fracture should be able to heal relatively well if it can be kept together. So in these circumstances, the fracture components are held together either using a dynamic hip screw or using something called cannulated screws. And that essentially acts a bit like a skewer to keep those two fracture components um, intact. With garden three and four fractures which are more significantly displaced and where the fracture has happened within the joint capsule, there is a high risk that the blood supply will be compromised in which case it's not very likely that the, that the proximal fracture component is going to heal particularly well and hence it usually requires some form of joint replacement. So this may be in the form of a hemiarthroplasty where only the head of the femur is replaced or it could be a total hip replacement where the head of the femur and the acetabulum is replaced. So when it comes to deciding between these two operations it tends to be the case that Patients who are independent, uh, relatively mobile and have no cognitive impairment are likely to benefit from a total hip replacement, whereas patients who don't meet that criteria are more likely to have a hemiarthroplasty. So when it comes to taking a history or just assessing a patient with a potential neck of femur fracture, it's very important to understand a little bit about their baseline mobility and their cognition, because a lot of these patients will be elderly.